were talking to us, you kind of challenged, people were going to challenge your guys after that practice. How do you like how they responded? Uh, I think they responded really well. Uh, they came out today and it was a much different attitude. Uh, very spirited practice is a good word for it, I guess, on both sides. And I thought we, we came out and were firing all cylinders. The guys were excited, good emotion, good communication. A lot of a lot of carryover as I look around individual, a lot of carryover from drill to team. That's what wasn't happening last year. They were just trying to get lined up and execute. But there's a lot of carryover happening right now and a lot of good stuff, so I was happy. Scott mentions your biggest injury to us. How do you, how do you just feel about where middle, your middle backers are at right now? Uh, I don't think we're deep enough there. For sure, um, you know, obviously Scott mentioned that injury. We got to have some of those other guys step up, maybe some incoming guys. Um, some of these, these walk-on guys, they're, they're not walk-ons anymore to me. I mean, they're just twos and threes, and, and they got to go. Um, they got to get ready, but we needed to keep developing depth at that position. We're going to have to have another big year recruiting at that position, but I don't feel great about the depth right there right now. Hey Coach, what do you think you'll be able to see from your unit uh, in front of a pack house in Florida State that maybe you haven't been able to observe um, here in the box? Uh, I don't know if it's something you haven't been able to observe. I mean, obviously every spring game you, you tamp it down a little bit, running some base stuff. Obviously these are on national television. You don't want to give up way too much. Uh, but one more chance for us to get off blocks and tackle. One more chance for us to make plays when it's live bullets. And then you're going to see a couple guys that haven't had the chance to play in front of 10,000, let alone 90,000. So I'm going to see how those guys react, if they get big eyes or if they're going to go out there and operate a little bit, so that'll be that'll be really fun to watch. Scott said last week that, um, in simple terms, that, that you guys have kind of kicked the offense's butt for most of this spring. Is that where you expected this defense to be back in January during spring practice, and where did you expect to be um, one practice for the spring game? Um, you know, I, th I thought we were going to be pretty good up front, and when you're good up front, then the rest of the team can kind of catch up. Um, so I think that kind of happened. We're good up front. The back end's playing really good right now. Colin Miller and, and Mo Berry are really playing playing well. And like we got to mention, we got to get some guys to come along. But I don't know if I thought we'd be quite where we're at. I'm pleased. I'm not. I don't think we're ready to, to you know, to go play the, the college football playoffs right now by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm pleased with where we're at. I think it's I think it's good progress. How much did Gary Daniels figure into that? Like, how, how, how happy have you been with him, and how, how good has he been for that defensive line? Yeah, I've been really happy with him. Not just that, obviously, he's a good football player. We all, I think you guys have figured that out from the comments, but. Um, He's really helped the whole group elevate. He's provided competition. He's provided leadership, a, a grown up in that room, if you will. He's provided uh, work ethic. He's provided a lot to that group. So I think he was a huge addition to our team. You have seven fifth year seniors on that defense and a bunch of fourth year guys too. Does it feel like you're coaching men and not kids? You know what? Regardless of age, it feels like we're coaching you know, some grown men this year, and I don't think it's age. I think it's attitude of the team. I think it's how they're working, how they go about their business. Um, I don't know if it's a 180, but at least a 90 degree turn from where we were at finishing that year. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy with the way the guys just work and the, the way they understand what we're trying to get done. How much does that process, uh, having that kind of locked down, help the early enrollees, those younger guys, uh, step up and not really miss a beat? Uh, it's been huge, and I think. I think we've embraced the attitude where I tell those guys the last meeting we ever have is I'm going on the road and I am trying to replace you. Everybody in this room, period. Your job is to teach the new guys how to take your job and know they can't do it. And I think Mo Berry and, and some of those DBs are embracing that job. I'm going to teach you how to take my job, bud, but you can't do it. You can't outplay me. You can't outwork me. And that's, that's been a huge step in the right direction for us. That's great for us. <laughs> Adrian Martinez is an exceptional football player, and you know, as a defensive coach, a lot of times in practice, especially when the head coach is an offensive guy, you think you got a sack, and you're like, oh, blow the whistle, because you're not supposed to touch the quarterback. With that guy back there, a lot of times the kids are like, there's a sack. I'm like, no, it wasn't, boys. He got out of there, and he's still running. So I think he's an exceptional football player. He's an exceptional leader. He makes our team better, not just the offense. I think he's as good as I've been around. Besides the, the leadership part of Adrian, 
what else have you seen, I guess, in the physical game that has improved? I think he's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster. But I think as a quarterback, he was – you know, he had a pretty good skill set anyways last year. I think now he's just so much more comfortable with the offense, so much more comfortable with what he's supposed to do with the football. That ball's coming out fast. He's making the reads in the run game. I think just that mental part of his, his clock is moving so much faster, which is pretty cool. How much does that make the defense? Oh, it's, it's because Adrian doesn't look at our, our our the receivers. You know what I mean? He 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 can tell what we're doing coverage wise, and he knows where he's going to go. So he's not one of those guys that's going to stare us down. So we got to really break on balls. We've got to really be honest in the run game. So he helps us a, a tremendous amount. Eric, uh, you experienced this good first spring game of the year in Nebraska last year. What about the atmosphere tomorrow? Well, yeah, I was like one of those guys we were talking about earlier. You know, I was like, you know, we're going to come out. I've been in some spring games before. We came out of that thing last year, and I think all the coaches kind of got a little chill. That was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to be ready for it, but I'm telling all the recruits, I'm like, we got to get you here for the spring game. We got to get you here for the spring game because I always want them to witness a game day atmosphere, and I can't tell the difference between. Saturday, April 15th, and September 9th or whatever. So I want to get those people, those families here, so they can see what Nebraska is all about, so they can see what the fans are all about, the best fans in college football, and what it's really like to be in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska on game day. And you go right away next week. I don't know if we're going to be talking on Saturday, so ready to do the recruiting thing. Yeah. Um, I got a I got a baby coming in about a week, so I'm trying I'm trying to be careful about what my proximity is in recruiting. So I'm gonna be in and out next week, and then the good thing about uh, Coach Frost kind of went before spring break this year, so that gives us six weeks to get our you know you only have a certain amount of days in recruiting. That's a whole other story, but we got six weeks to get those done this year instead of four, so I can kind of pick and choose a little bit, and hopefully we get that baby here shortly so I can get going. <laughs> What's that like juggling, juggling that? I know Ryan Hill had to do it too. Yeah, I think this is the third time. My first child came on Thursday of our game one. My second child came in the middle of spring ball. I left spring ball practice on Friday afternoon. Baby was born at like 3 in the morning, so I got there in time. And then this one is going to be touch and go too. If I didn't have an awesome wife that runs the house, I have, I'm have. i in charge here. She's in charge there. There's no, no doubt about it, but she is awesome and she takes care of those kids and me, so we, we make it work. Good. Yeah. All right.